Hello, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Sullivan, editor of Crop Life and Crop Life Iron Magazines, here with Laura Sawinski. Laura, how you doing today? Pretty good, thank you. I'm uh, sucking on a cough drop because I have a little scra- scratchy throat, but other than that, I'm doing swell. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, I see over your shoulder that you're ready if there is a fire in your complex. You just put the ladder down out the window and climb down, right? <laughs> Well, it's my stair- stairway to heaven, and it only goes up five rounds, but, you know, I'm working on it. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to date myself terribly, but I know that <laughs> Lewis in the News used to be a, a group back in the day, and I remember they did a song called Jacob's Ladder, and looking over your shoulder, I'm, I got that ear worm going on in my head now with that song, so, and I'm sure our viewers are now either, if they know the song, they've got it too, and if not, they're looking it up saying, Eric, you are weird. Well... Jacob's Ladder, um, just really quickly, I actually had an opportunity. This is trade-related, so I'm not too far up the path here. A number of years ago, I had an opportunity to ride out on a pilot boat at the Port of L.A. and climb up a Jacob's Ladder on an evergreen vessel um, with the pilot who brought the vessel in to birth. It was super, super cool, so... Jacob's Ladder, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, that the one behind you looks a little sturdier than the Jacob's Ladders I've seen. But nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. now that now that we've nonetheless. wasted all this time talking about ladders, <laughs> yeah. um, hey, just uh, to let our viewers know, of course, Laura and myself are both going to be on the road next week, so when you watch this video, we'll be preparing to leave on our respective trips. Um let you talk about yours in a moment, but I know for myself, I'm going to be joining a lot of the folks in the industry at the annual Illinois Fertilizer and Chemical Association meeting, which will take place in sunny, hopefully warm, Peoria, Illinois, on uh, the uh, 17th through the 19th of January. So I know that's a very good show for me, Laura. I see a lot of the folks I know in the industry. There's several exhibitors. I know there are going to be some very interesting speeches uh, or speakers at that event as well. Uh, got a gentleman talking about uh, U.S. and international trade, in particular dealing with the fertilizer part of the equation. And yep. then we also have a panel on something I mean, you'll find you'll probably find real interesting. It's a panel discussion talking about trucking, rail, and barge transportation, Whoa. looking at issues and challenges going forward. And uh, a few of the panelists. Uh, on that uh, group of speakers is going to include someone from Bromark and also from BNSF Railway. So uh, again, I'll have some video in about two weeks. We'll be able to share that with you, our viewers. So if you can't make the event and, uh, you know, stay tuned and you'll be able to get some of the highlights from myself. Now, Lori, you're going to be sending someplace a little sunnier than uh, Illinois going to be in Arizona, but tell the folks where you're going to be next week. Yeah, we'll uh, be in Glendale, Arizona, just outside of Phoenix there, right next to Phoenix, for the 2023 Vision Conference, our sixth Vision Conference, and looking at <clears throat> um, the future for ad tech. So we have a really uh, broad range of speakers on our program, on AI, cloud computing, climate smart ad, advanced technologies like blockchain and IoT, uh, robotics, automation, autonomous vehicles, Um, kind of not only where we're at with those technologies now, but certainly where we're going to be in three to five years. So, um, yeah, we're in the final stages, just kind of getting everything tightened up and set to go, bags are packed. Have my crop life medium magazines that we will be distributing to attendees. And it should be a really good show, honestly. Uh, it will be my first one, but having sat in on all the prep calls and talked with all the speakers and the moderators, um, really, really excited. And we have um, probably a, a, a good number. The last few weeks, not surprisingly, with the events, we had a really nice flurry of red registrations come in. So we're going to have a nice um group of folks there as well so all good um excuse me the um website https colon slash slash the vision conference.com 
So um, I may have mentioned it last week, but I know um, we've had some folks that are kind of begging to come in. So it's like we are offering a family and friends deal. Um, if folks still want to uh, get into the conference, we'll certainly accommodate them. We have a little incentive as well. So email either myself or Eric and make sure you can get that, that discount code. Yeah, I was going to say, and I know, I know it's a bit early, probably about a month, a, a month away from when Time Vision's taking place. But if I remember right, Glendale's where they're holding the Super Bowl this year, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the folks can plan a month long vacation, the Ten okay, Vision cool. first, and stick around for the Super Bowl. And I'm sure I know which one will be a little more cost prohibitive than the other. Makes uh, <laughs> sense. Uh, things work in the world of sports these days. So. But before we get too far afield here, Laura, I know before we got on camera, I had mentioned about the international trade yep. talk that'll be taking place at IFCA. And you said that you actually had um, an item to contribute on that topic. So I will leave the floor to you again. Yeah, no, I think um, in fact, I'll be eager to hear from you when you get back as well uh, regarding, you know, what you're hearing at, at the, the show you're attending you know, I follow international trade trends, what's going on in that world. And, you know, not surprisingly, forecasts for international trade growth are really, really down for this year. But in the last week or so, they've really like skidded almost to a stop. So I just wanted to toss out a couple of things I gathered uh, this week in the news. So um, a new report from Descartes Data Mine uh, shows that inbound container volumes are falling even more, you know, than they had anticipated. So much so on in December, they fell all the way down to where they were pre pandemic. So while we had a couple years of growth, um, in 21 and 22, um, the last half of 22 things really just started to take a downturn and now they're really coming, on uh, almost to a skid. So December we're, box volumes, in other words, container volumes, were 19.3% behind container imports the same month last year. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, new ship builds. So the last couple, three years, all the container lines, the ship, shipping lines, you know, they had a bonanza, if you will. Um, and they went on a, a buying spree, including uh, new ship builds. They were getting into uh, 3PO, air cargo, they were really, really, uh, you know, ch chasing this big demand from cargo. But again, things have throttled back so dramatically that their procurement officers are being told to do not uh, put any more or orders in. And in fact, they're you know, approaching the shipbuilding yards and saying, hey, could we uh, <laughs> hold off on this order uh, for the, the time being? And I guess there is a clause <clears throat> whereby the ship build builders will give uh, six months or so kind of a grace period of things look, you know, like they're slowing down, but they're actually uh, being a little more generous um, knowing that things have turned so um, dramatically. So yeah. And then one, one last item on um, the world bank came out and said global growth um, for the economy, uh, is going to slow to 1.7% in 2023, down from their original forecast of 3%. Um, reasons being high inflation, rising interest rates, lower investment, and the Russia-Ukraine war. Wow. So count on me for always the doom and gloom, but man, it's it's uh, it's tough out there. Well, and I was going to say, I know that's the one the one downside. Again, whenever whenever we've had a good couple of years, in a row, you know, I, I always like, okay, you know, these things are cyclical. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. So we've been up for a little while, like you say, with the the, the, the shipping container orders. And well, so I guess, you know, after after a few years of buildup, then you have a lull. So that sounds like that's where we may be heading this year. So again, we'll have to keep an eye on that and see what effect it may have on, uh, you know, transportation in general. Like I said, I'll yeah. probably find out more at the panel discussion than I hear next week. So, yeah, um, d d definitely keep your ears open for anything regarding rates. 
<clears throat> whether it's rail um road or, or barge and as you said so yeah no i will i will see maybe that might be a fun with numbers who knows okay. but i'm i'm getting yeah. ahead of myself but uh, again um you know before we get too far <laughs> afield again international trade there was one other thing that i wanted to talk about this week uh I know you remember, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking a little bit about this whole conflict back and forth between the U.S. and Mexico regarding biotech corn shipments, okay. uh, importation from those from the United States into Mexico. And um, I know last week I reported that, you know, based on what the Mexican government was saying, that they were hopeful some type of a, an agreement could be reached where all parties would be happy and they were hoping to have something hammered up by the end of January. Um, but I did read this week that uh, Secretary of Ag, Tom Vilsack, uh, I guess he kind of uh, threw a little bit of cold water on this uh, negotiation when he basically said that from the United States position, there is, quote unquote, no reason to compromise the U.S. position that Mexico cannot ban U.S. biotech corn from coming into the country because of the terms of the U.S.-Mexico Canada agreement, the uh, agreement that the countries hammered out that replaced NAFTA back in 2020. So, unquote. Mm. So, again, um, you know, the U.S. sounds like at, at this point, the U.S. may be taking a little harder line. So, um, again, we'll have to, as always, viewers, stay tuned. We'll have to be watching how these negotiations go down between now and the end of the month. But we were very, I know myself, I was hopeful something would get hammered out. Uh, quickly, but it may be a longer process, and it uh, might be a little more difficult than I thought. So, we're ahead. all we're right, ahead. well, Miss Laura, yep. unless yep. you have more, that it is time for your favorite segment. Time for fun wow. with number. Well, I I'll remind you that I did get last week's correct. You you did, <laughs> and then I, a long dry spell. So and and <laughs> I'm I'm hopeful you will get this week's as well because okay. I'm, I'm trying I'm trying desperately to give you positive <laughs> chances. All right. So all right, you got two numbers this week. You have thirty cents and seventy cents. Okay. All right. So thirty cents, seventy cents. Does that represent a the increase in gas prices over the past week in the U.S. as a whole versus here in Ohio, which I will note has some of the most expensive gas prices in the country. Uh, is it B, the projected price per bushel increases for corn and soybean for 2023? Is it C, the projected cash rent per acre increases for farmland in the Iowa and Indiana for 2023? Or is it D, the amount of money I had left in my right pants pocket versus my left pants pocket after my last business trip and some more issues with airline travel? <laughs> wow. I mean, again, they're really hats off to you for those creative. <laughs> <laughs> And well, people will think it's weird I'm putting change in two different pockets, but sometimes, <laughs> you know, if I'm shuffling a bag and, and money, I, I get mixed up where it goes. So, <laughs> Well, I'm going to go with B, the um, prices as they relate to corn and soy. You are batting a thousand this year, ma'am. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. Yes, I, I ran across a report that our friends at the Ohio State University and the University of Illinois released their projected uh, price per uh, bushel increases for corn and soybean for this year, and that they had increased the price per bushel for corn from 530 to 560, and they had also increased 70 cents on per bushel for soybean to $13.40. So again, when they uh, when they did their first end of the year numbers, they were lower, but now they're projecting them to be higher, which again should help profitability for your average growers of corn and soybean for this year. And fingers crossed, stay tuned. We'll be following that, of course, like everything else we do in the agricultural market. Well, that's great. I'm glad we ended on a high note because uh, 
Oh, yeah. Good. Bad news. <laughs> We've done two of these this year, and so, like I said, so far you're two for two. So we'll see All if right. we get keep the streak going next week. So, and again, <laughs> folks, if uh, you happen to be in uh, Peoria, Illinois, or Glendale, Arizona, at IFCA's annual meeting or vision, please stop by and say hello to myself or Laura and our crew. And for all of you out there, hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you again for real soon. Thanks. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.